we'll get set up now. So um, the, the next week is um, Gurman Tedesse from Oxford. We'll be talking about um, world water supply um, infrastructure. And he's um, replacing um, Heloise, who is here not because of not a visa problem, but a family issue. But he's helpfully stepped in to, to cover it. So take it away. Uh, thank you. Uh, as mentioned, uh, Halois, who worked tirelessly on this project, left early due to personal reasons. So I just stepped up to give you the overview of uh, the work. It's trying to understand the uh, monitoring of hand pumps in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. And a very simple fact, more than 200 million people in Sub-Saharan Africa depend on hand pumps to get their daily water usage. And these hand pumps, which could be more than one million, uh, the unfortunately, a third of them is not working at any time. And uh, worse is it takes usually more than a month, possibly, to maintain those hand pumps back into action because of they are mainly in rural areas with the infrastructure, the transportation, and the spare part limitations. And uh, the, the problem is what happens during this uh, down period and people, since they mainly depend on those hand pumps for water usage, they may go for alternatives and they may expose themselves to contaminated surface water where you may have waterborne disease. A very simple pilot study done where they try to manually call the corresponding person or institution whenever a uh, hand pump breakdown occurs showed that the maintenance period can goes down uh, I think as, as small as a few days. And with this, we, we have this question. What if we could predict the failures and prevent any downtime? And giving this uh, safely managed water is one of the sustainable uh, developments for UN. So uh, our lab, which is computational health informatics at the University of Oxford, focuses on trying to monitor patients, which, actually, which, is, which is actually my active area of research by using variable sensors. We had also the experience to monitor jet engines in aeroplanes and monitor, to, to, to monitor their well-being. So we believe this approach could be also mapped on hand pumps as well. For, for that, uh, on those uh, uh, hand pumps in rural areas, we use uh, the on-site on, on sensor device that contains uh, a bit of uh, microprocessor as a, a processing unit, and we use the bandwidth, the local telecom network, for any communication between the edge device and the remote uh, server or cloud server, uh, which works with a battery. Uh, however, the, the mostly the limitation is when you try to send or transmit raw observation data with this limited battery and the, you know telecom bandwidth limitation. It's it's very costly. So the, the idea is trying to do a bit of uh, f first initial uh, processing on the on the edge device itself and trying to transmit very very useful data, what they call intelligent data, whenever there is a sense of uh, deterioration. And then with that, we could have a cloud server remotely where we could run more sophisticated algorithms for more confident inference. So I think the overall health monitoring system have a few uh, parts. The first one is the rural infrastructure and sensor node where you have, of course, hand pumps are shown and this uh, node mounted on, on site contains uh, different sensors according like accelerometer humidity. And as I said, it works with the battery. And the type of sensor specifically used in this study is, uh, I think, accelerometer sensor mounted on the hand pump trying to encode the motion in three axes, X, Y, Z. And once the data is, I think, collected, we could transmit to, to a remote server using the telecom, the local telecom network, but also it could be downloaded manually on the PC. I think the most interesting part is the onboard processing unit. You have the raw observation, and we could do light novel filter, trying to detect whether the, 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 moon, the health status of the hand pump. And as I said, uh, this involves trying to extract very like, time frequency features on the raw time series data and do use the classification or inference using light classifiers like logistic regression. Uh, I think the, uh, the pipeline is as such. You have a data collection, accelerometer data with three channels, and the pre-processing steps will be trying to uh, visualize the frequency time representation. And as you see, on probably in the second column, they, the, it, it will have different uh, spectrogram uh, representation when the hand pump is doing working normally and abnormally. 
and with a bit fine tuning of the features uh, the third column we do as I said uh, lightweight nobility filter or classification on the normality of the hand pump so the features uh, is uh, shown on the left is when you have abnormal hand pump in the right on normal hand pump and the I think the wells for this hand pumps could be as well deep and shallow and mainly in the rural areas where there are sparse ground water, you need to go deep down to get water. So that is where the challenge comes because as you see on the, the distribution, the normal and abnormal seems to have very, very similar because the, with the deep hand pumps, the, I think the infrastructure becomes more complex and the edge device would be very, a bit far away from the, the water level. And we focus on that research. So this is like the very first validation where the data uh, collected on the site is uh, manipulating with the feature extraction and initial inferences done with logistic regression. And uh, as a baseline, I think they did with SCVM as a baseline. And as you can see, the logistic regression itself could give a very competitive performance on the edge itself. This F1, FV2, FV3 are the spectrogram of frequency coefficient features, and it's the way they try to sample features among, uh, like I think, 64 frequency coefficients. Uh, to say more on that aspect, I think once they have the time series data, they apply, of course, for, for ray transform, and they have like 64 coefficients, but they try to discard the motion related with the hand, like low level frequency component. So they try to take the frequency in, in, in between, and this is different uh, selection of frequency components, I think, like uh, uniform sampling, random sampling among these 64 frequency coefficients. So the, the overall idea is you could do something better with logistic regression on the site. And finally, we, if we know the status of the hand pump on the, on the site, we could transfer data uh, when the hand pump is deteriorating and on the cloud, of course, we could have the luxury to run more sophisticated algorithms to, to have more confident uh, decisions. So as I said, data is transmitted only uh, once the hand pump suspected condition is deteriorating, uh, as I said earlier, this reduces the cost for transmitting data and, of course, preserve uh, battery life as well. And as I said, the cloud system can apply more computationally powerful machine learning methods on top of the logistic regression we did on the on the site. The this is the first result. I think they have. A, Type, two type of data set. One is intranode, where they have just one uh, deeper uh, hand pump, which, which is very, more than, I think, 53 meters down, whereas the intranode is like a bit shallower, but still deep between 23 and 53 meters deep. So the overall picture here is that on this, I mean, on, on the cloud, they tried different classifiers like logistic, random forest, and SCVM. The horizontal line shows how much data do you need to transmit from the site to the cloud. So as you see, uh, SVM seems very dependent on the amount of data you got, whereas uh, random forest uh, seems very confident even if the amount, the proportion of data transmitted from the on-site is, is very limited. So I think from this, uh, they found out logistic regression and on, on the site and random forest on the cloud is the best combination to get, I think, better performance. So how does this benefit people using this hand pumps? I think it, the good thing, it distributes the computation both on the local and remote. That, that will save a lot of computational power. And uh, this could be like a very advanced monitoring of sand pumps uh, in combination with maintenance service can reduce and even eliminate the, the, eliminate the downtime if proper, uh, proper monitoring is done. So as I said, yeah, early warning allows uh, preventive uh, maintenance. So I think here is the group in case you want to uh, chat with them. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry, Roman actually had one. Anyone have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Ah, sorry. How much access? Uh, I think the question is like, if it's a rural area, how, how could that 
that access could be achieved. I think we work in collaboration with, I think this is particular in Kenya, Kowali region to be specific. So they collaborate with people uh, which work in the geography department and other corresponding stakeholders in Kenya. And uh, they use the local telecom network to transmit like GCM, the on-site device as a GCM mode to transfer data somewhere remotely. And that is, that is how the data transmission could be done from the edge device to the local the remote server. Any other question? Um, somebody else had a question. Yeah, the next speaker can come up. Um, somebody had a question just on, in terms of other ways that how can, they, can, can people call when these things fail? Like, why is automated, automated detection of it so essential in this case? Uh, come again. Um, if people notice that the, the pump is, is failing, couldn't there be other ways to, to connect it and, and, and get that data out? Uh, I think the, the, the overall idea is like, I think they are very motivated with the pilot study. So when they, someone gives them a number to call when the maintenance fails, it reduces the, the maintenance period from a month to three days. So rather than just calling, if we do like, like automatically using on-site device that will replicate that, that I think, uh, reduction of the maintenance period. It's yeah. a lot of time. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions for the speaker? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. All right. And thanks for stepping in for the, uh, the, the missing speaker.